Hi, welcome to the, this edition of Distilled Demographics, where we have some fun with the demography and we all learn a few things. This time we're going to talk about population momentum. And what you might ask is momentum. Well, we all know, at least I think we do, that when a country's birth rate reaches roughly two children per woman, that ultimately population growth stops. And the ultimately is the key to momentum. Normally, in a high life expectancy country like the US or France, around 2.1 children are required in order to reach replacement level. And our replacement level is when a couple just replaces themselves, two for two. So they don't increase the size of each succeeding generation. But why the point one? Well, it's a little tricky, but the total fertility rate, which is what that 2.1 is, the average number of children a woman would bear in her lifetime at the birth rate of a particular year is thrown off a little bit by the sex ratio at birth. Normally there's about 5% more male babies born than female. And the other little part of that point one, in fact, is the fact that not all women, even in the industrialized countries, live to the end of their childbearing years. But 2.1 is not always required. In this table, we can see the estimates of the United Nations, what total fertility rate would be required today for a country to reach replacement. And we can see that uh, in France, that would be about 2.07 children per woman. Whereas if we go to the uh, bottom of the table in Nigeria, it would be 2.7. And one of the main reasons for that is the uh, higher uh, death rate in Nigeria. So a smaller proportion of women survive to the end of their child-bearing years. And we can see that in the female life expectancy, which is 85 in France and only 53 in Nigeria. Now let's look at two practical examples of just how m momentum does work. Uh, the first graph is the United Nations estimates and projections for Bangladesh. And in fact, the UN estimates that Bangladesh will reach replacement this very year. But notice the TFR, the total fertility rate. It's not 2.1, it's 2.17. Because Bangladesh's life expectancy is around, uh, around 71 when it reaches replacement, which is, as you, as you can see from the earlier table, well below some of the industrialized countries. Notice how long population continues to grow in Bangladesh. And we'll get to why in a second. 55 years. It grows from 158 million today to about 220 million, but that's not until 2068. And at that point, Bangladesh will then stop growing. But that's a lot of increase when you think about it after having reached replacement. It's a little different in Uganda. As you can see, the UN assumes that Uganda will not reach replacement until the year 2065 when it has 115 million people. It would stop growing though in 35 years, a little quicker than in Bangladesh, and come to an end right at the end of this century at about 139, 140 million. So we have two different kinds of momentum there, if you will. Now let's look at why Bangladesh and Uganda are so different. Notice in Bangladesh in 2013, and that is the year that the UN estimates it will reach replacement, that there's that bulge of young people there, especially from age five on up to what, to about age 20. So there's a larger group of young people who resulted from a period of higher fertility. When we look at Uganda, we can see that the pyramid, when it reaches replacement in 2065, it's more slab-sided, isn't it? It doesn't have that bulge of young people. So there's less built-in momentum for Uganda to grow, which is why it grows for a shorter period, 35 years in Uganda versus uh, 55 in Bangladesh. And just to illustrate that point, we can see here how fertility fell in Bangladesh much more quickly uh, than it did in Uganda. And that's why we had that leftover number, if you will, that larger number of young people. But countries can come to the replacement level fertility without a lot of population momentum and here we see the example of Germany. Uh, Germany reached replacement level in 1970. That's about 40 years ago. But notice how 
deaths began to exceed births only two years later. So there was no built-in momentum whatsoever for Germany in terms of its births and deaths. And why? Because it has a much different history of fertility than either Bangladesh or Uganda. Fertility came down in Germany over a much longer period. There were interruptions with the war. Uh, and so it reached, in, in a sense, it reached replacement and what we sometimes call zero population growth almost together. So that's population momentum. And when thinking about projections, one good question to ask is, how long will this country grow after reaching replacement? Because in the case of, I guess, virtually every developing country, they are going to grow for quite some time.